Welcome to Digital Asset News, taking top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today we're going to do a little bit of a different format. I'm going to tell you about one project that I'm going to massively increase my holdings and also I'm going to talk to you about there is one new project I'll be adding to my overall portfolio. And I'm going to explain why exactly I'm doing these actions, but first let's take a look at today's market. So it is Tuesday, August 18th. Uh, it's about uh, three o'clock Texas time. And it looks like uh, a little bit of a slide, a little bit of a slide overall throughout the whole different market. So Bitcoin's down 2%, but not surprising. Hey, we've had a heck of a run, right? And there's gotta be a little bit of pullbacks here and there. Like I say, ebbs and flows, right? So 2% down, but we are still over 12K. Pretty happy about that. Ethereum, also again, over 400. XRP, miraculously, is able to hold on to 30 cents. Tether is Tether, so that's that. Chainlink, one of the biggest losers of today. Looks like they are down 11%, but I gotta tell you, massive run for all the Link Marines. I mean, they went from, you know, seven, eight, nine dollars all the way rocketing up to 19. Now a little bit of pullback, hitting around $17, but you can't be upset with that. Bitcoin Cash, hey, down 4%. Actually, everything just down overall. And it doesn't matter the um, actual, you know, great stories that you hear about or the new partnerships that are being developed. Just overall, that's just how it is for cryptocurrency and digital assets, except for Ave. <laughs> Somehow, 3.9% up. What are you going to do? All right, let's jump into today's top story. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is, is VeChain and indirectly Cardano. And one of these, I'm going to massively increase my positions. And uh, we'll talk about why. So VeChain's new partnership, which really wasn't a really big deal when I, when I read it, could bring blockchain tech to dozens of untapped industries. And indirectly, uh, Cardano did this exact same move, and that's why it's so important. But yeah, let's just go into it. So the VeChain Foundation has partnered with accounting and consulting firm Grant Thornton Cypress. So if you're not familiar with them, let's just pull them up. So this real quick is from their website. Here's a history of Grant Thornton. It was created in the 1920s, so it's been around a good century. So uh, it's got a little longevity onto it. But what exactly is it? Well, today Grant Thornton LLP is the U.S. member firm of Grant Thornton International. Let me tell you, when they, when they say international, they are not kidding. If you take a look at where they actually are throughout the whole globe, uh, they are in over 135 countries, so they are essentially a powerhouse. But what do they do? Well, as it says right here, they are one of the world's leading organizations of independent audit, tax, and advisory firms. These firms help dynamic organizations unlock their potential for growth by providing meaningful, forward-looking advice. So really, if you look at it, what they are is they are like Price Waterhouse Coopers, audit, tax and advisory firms and they do a lot of consulting so when they talk about all these different countries and all their different clients if you take a look at the about excuse me if you don't look at the actual industries they have partnerships and they have clients in all these different sectors banking energy food and beverage healthcare hospitality insurance manufacturing educational private equity real estate and construction retail and consumer product services technology telecommunications and transportation distribution. So when we take a look at what this company brings to the table, it is massive. And when you take a look at what VeChain did, is they not partnered up with them, but they said, hey, we want to be a part of your family underneath your umbrella. And of course, they're going to pay massively for this. But it's not about the information that they can get from these from this group. It's all about what kind of connections they can build from all the different clients that they have. Again, take a look at the industries. And if they are global, which they, I mean, definitely are, and they are connecting people to people to people to corporations to entities to LLCs to whatever else to I mean all these different businesses, uh, it is a huge boom. So I have always talked about business, and it is not what you know. It is not your product. It is not how good you are at something. It is not any of those things. Really what it comes down to, in a lot of cases, it's who you know. There are different kingmakers out there and they are finite. So when you find something like this, uh, you grab on. I really didn't, didn't really appreciate that until I was uh, learning about Cardano when they went with Price Waterhouse Coopers. And I said, who really cares about that? And this was from, oh, this is from uh, March when they had hooked up with them. And this was uh, actually in a late January YouTube live stream. Hoskins had said that Price Waterhouse Coopers will drive a Cardano commercialization strategy. And I thought, well, that's good. You know, they hook up with somebody and then they can get that going. But when I take a real look at what's going on behind the scenes, 
these blockchains, these cryptocurrency digital assets that are going with these types of companies are going to supercharge them into getting into even more of the public eye or just behind the scenes and working with different businesses because it's all about who you know. And these people, I think, are kingmakers. Anyhow, moving on. According to an announcement from the company, the partnership hopes to extend blockchain solutions to a variety of industries, just like what I said. These will largely be determined by the Cypriot or Cypriot company's network of customers, but may include the food industry, pharmaceuticals, logistics, automotive, supply chain management, renewable, just what I was just saying. It only makes sense. If you go to these types of companies, it's a perfect combination. It's like you can do our audits, you can do a commercialization strategy, and also you have all these different people in place. We'd like to talk to them. Maybe you can connect us. <laughs> That's all it is. Moving down, discussing the company's interest in blockchain development, Grant Thornton, Cypress Director of Distributed Ledger Technology, Alexis Nicolau noted that legislation governing blockchain te technology in Cyprus is eminent, and they actually have their own person who is head of DLT. So if that's not a forward-thinking thing, I don't know what is. And then lastly, it states, recently the VeChain Foundation announced a blockchain-based food safety solution based on its blockchain as a service platform. And this is actually from an article we covered a couple weeks ago. Uh, this is on actually August 5th, where VeChain had actually partnered up with the third largest pasta producer worldwide, which at first I was like, who cares? It's just pasta. Good for them. What I initially thought that this article was talking about was that they were partnering with to to track the supply of the pasta that this this company actually produced just to make sure that it was fresh and that it was you know maintained safety standards or whatever else but that wasn't it that they were following the guidelines set forth by the Italian government to make sure that they were doing the protocols and safety checks for the coronavirus. And they were making sure that all their different employees were hitting these standards. And they were using VeChain in that way. So I thought to myself, okay, well, this is great because it's not just like every company is a pasta producer, but every single corporation has employees. And all these employees have to hit some type of protocols. And if they have to hit all these protocols because of this coronavirus, and not just this virus, I don't know what's going to happen in the next, I don't know, two years, four years, five years, what else is coming to the pipe? So if you can use VeChain in that regard, why wouldn't you do it, especially if it's transparent, makes it easy, makes it simple. So I was thinking about doing both of these, VeChain and Cardano, but I'm going to massively increase uh, the amount that I invest into VeChain, especially with this move they did right now. I, I mean, I don't care what they did before. I, I don't care the partnerships they have right there, but just going in with these people right here, Grant Thornton, and they have all those connections and all the different things that are going to happen. Again, I think it's a kingmaker and I will massively increase and I will probably consider about buying uh, VeChain daily. All right, let's move on. Next up, Data Network welcome, welcomes web comedy Fail Army to its next premium content partner. So again, uh, an article I just kind of glanced over, didn't really think it was a big deal until I got into it. So Theta Network is excited to welcome web comedy Fail Army as its premium content partner to Theta.tv global streaming platform, exclamation point. Fail Army counts more than 60 million fans across YouTube and social media. Now will be available 24-7 on Theta.tv. I think this would be a bigger story if Fail Army just said, we're going to exclusively be on Theta uh, Network or Theta TV, just like how Joe Rogan said, I'm going to uh, exclusively uh, be on Spotify. Uh, but that's not what's going on, but they're just adding to it. I think it's a pretty good addition, so not too bad. Fail Army receives more than 1 billion video views per month across digital platforms. And I got to tell you, uh, I think this would be a little bit of a hit to YouTube because if YouTube is like, well, you know, I got uh, Fail Army over here and they're going to, you know, split their views because not, not no one wants to watch two videos of the same thing on the same day or same week. Uh, so if Theta TV is doing that, that's loss of views. Joe Rogan, same type of thing. And all the other different influencers that are getting off of the YouTube platform going someplace else, what kind of dent is that going to do in the business of YouTube? Something to think about. Then it states here, with many of us still stuck at home this summer, users can stay safe and enjoy great new content from Fail Army on Theta TV and earn some T fuel at the same time. Because if you don't know, uh, as you get as you watch things, you actually are rewarded in T fuel. What a great thing! I think we should probably start migrating to that uh, 
that platform. FeralArmyJoinsData.tv as it continues to enrich its content offering beyond esports into genres, including classic movies from MGM, live poker or the World Poker Tour, breathtaking live events like NASA and the first SpaceX manned launch on May 27th, and live stream virtual conferences such as Consensus by Coindesk, Crypto Asia Summit, and Virtual Blockchain Week with more to come down the road. And I got to tell you, that's not a pretty bad prospect. So let's see what esports is actually doing and why it's so big. So if you don't know, esports is a little bit of a tiny little company that uh, has been around and is going to hit massive growth. So this is a little chart broken down between esports enthusiasts and the occasional viewers. So the light bluish green, blue greenish is the occasional viewers and then plus the esports enthusiasts. And that's what makes it all up. So uh, if you're looking at 2016, uh, 121 million, 160 million total. 2017, 143 million, 192, and so on and so forth. To 2021, they are projecting 250 million esports enthusiasts and the occasional viewer, such as myself, which will be 307 million people. So that's a uh, pretty big growth, and it is the fastest growing sport in the world. Let me say that again. It is the fastest growing sport in the world. And when you have things like pandemics hitting everywhere and people can't get out and play sports, what are they going to do? Well, esports is probably going to grow even faster. Just my thoughts. But the real question is, what's Theta anyhow? Let's take a look at that. So this is from thetatoken.org. This little, little video is about a minute long. This is what Theta is all about. Technology today is amazing. But somehow streaming quality and load times are still terrible. Everyone has a computer with extra bandwidth to spare, especially when a machine's not being used. And now you can make money by putting that bandwidth to use thanks to Theta Token. Here's how it works. When you're watching your favorite streamer or when you're asleep, Theta Client will tap into your extra bandwidth to relay video streams to local viewers. They'll enjoy improved stream quality and loading times while you earn Theta Tokens. The more you deliver, the more you earn. With your tokens, you can send donations to your favorite streamers, unlock premium content, and buy and gift virtual items. Theta is a new blockchain and built by Sliver TV, a leading esports live streaming startup based in Silicon Valley that has raised more than $17 million in venture financing, has over 2 million users, and is growing quickly. Theta completed a $20 million private token sale in early 2018 and launched its live testnet in June 2018. Three weeks after launch, over 300,000 users from 149 different countries have shared video on the Theta testnet. Over 40% bandwidth offloaded, improved quality and reach. Okay, and then the rest of it is bragging. So, I mean, to me, it only makes sense, right? If you're not using something, you might as well get paid for it. And that's what I always talk about as far as like what I call the share economy. The share economy is pretty big now, but I think it's going to be massively huge uh, as time goes on. If you, and you can even see it. Uh, Airbnb, even though Airbnb has taken a big hit lately because of the coronavirus, I'm pretty sure it'll, it'll, it'll roar back and be exactly what it was. And it's probably going to IPO this year or maybe even next year. Who knows? But yeah, I mean, you have Airbnb, you know, you, you have your home, your apartment, or whatever else you can, sh you can uh, rent it all out. And it's actually what we do uh, with uh, our home in Houston. And it works out fantastic. Then also you have uh, that uh, Toro, not eToro, but Toro. It's where you can rent out your car. You got Uber. I mean, if you want to, you know, drive around, you know, you're not really using your car. So Uber. And then uh, even like with Elon Musk and uh, Tesla, some of their new cars that they're talking about when they actually become autonomous are going to be uh, these autonomous taxis. So that's why the price is actually going to go up later on because you're going to be able to put your car out when you're not driving it and it sends it's autonomous and go pick up people and drop them off and you can get earn, earn money for that. That's amazing. That's crazy. But that is the uh, share economy. And that's that's the, the thing they're talking about here with Theta. If you're not using your bandwidth, why not sell it off and get uh, T-Fuel for whatever else? And you can use it for all the things they talked about in the video. So I think it's going to be huge. But it's not just that. But it's also like the people behind it, which the big one is uh, Steve Chen, co-founder of YouTube. And he's uh, a part of this project. So uh, if he's even saying this, like, hey, this is going to be, you know, pretty much enormous. 
uh, time to take notice. And I was just taking a look at, uh, you know, the Theta. It's called Theta.TV. And you can go there and just see a bunch of different uh, people streaming. I mean, if you like games and all the things they talked about, MGM and uh, the Spacewalk and SpaceX and stuff like that, and you can just sign up pretty easily. Um, Facebook, Twitch, or email, whatever else. I probably will because... <laughs> Because I like to watch some of this stuff, but uh, it's pretty interesting. I think it's not at least a, a competitor to, to Twitch, and we'll see how it all goes. But uh, this is one. No, this is the other one. Um, I'm not invested in this now, but I will be. I'm going to uh, invest a little bit into Theta, and you have to understand, like like my investments. I kind of just see them as like firecrackers on a chain. Uh, the first firecracker to go off are the ones that I think could really hit uh, first of all. And that will be something like Bitcoin because everybody talks about it and whatever else. The other ones down the line are things like, you know, Cardano and uh, VeChain potentially and uh, maybe even EOS. Who knows? I don't know. And, you know, Theta uh, could be one of those ones that are like a late bloomer later on. But I can see... The functionality of it, I can see, you know, the different partnerships they have. I can see the people behind it, so it makes sense to me, probably so. All right, let's move on to last section. Last section, in case you don't know, Kraken has listed Polkadot, but there is a re-denomination at a rate of 100 to one, so they're just going to move the uh, decimal point uh, two places. So this is all about re-denomination and fantastic. So I had to take a look at uh, Polkadot itself, and I had talked about it before. There were some things that I had that I said that were inaccurate, so I want to make sure I was accurate today. So I took a look at blockchain or Bitcoin.com. They wrote a nice little article. This is all the way back in January 22nd because I wanted to see the history of it and where it was so I could see where it's going. I'm a big believer in history because I can take a look back and see what happened and probably take a look at what's going to happen now and in the future. So it talks about here, remember Polkadot? It's, and this is, remember, back in January 2020. Remember Polkadot? It's the multi-chain network that raised $145 million in 2017 and hasn't been seen since. So right here, I can tell you right now, a lot of people probably call this a scam already. Uh, but look, it's back and it's being listed today, only, you know, three years <laughs> three years later. Its team, led by Ethereum founder Gavin Wood, which is pretty impressive, right? Another Ethereum co-founder launching his own thing. Polkadot aims to solve blockchain's interoperability problem, problem, as well as the governance problem and forking problem and a bunch of other commonly cited problems. Polkadot could easily be lumped in with all the other blockchains professing to magically solve these problems, but it shouldn't be written off so quickly. So here's what they got. Polkadot boasts the talents of Gavin Wood, Peter Zabin, the tech, I hopefully said that right, the technology director of the Web3 Foundation, and Robert Habermeyer, a Thiel, or Peter Thiel fellow, who's received funding to pursue scientific research into blockchains and cryptography. There's a lot of brains behind Polkadot, as you can just see right there. I mean, look, you've got somebody, the co founder of uh, Ethereum, well, Peter Zabin, technology director of Web3 Foundation. That's impressive. But as anyone who's been following the fate of VC-funded chains will know, it takes more than boffins to build a successful ecosystem. If Polkadot can't create a thriving community of developers, users, and businesses eager to tap into its multi-chain network of networks, it will be DOA. And that's the thing about business. I mean, you can have the best product, the best people, but if people aren't buying it, it's worthless. Moving down. Polkadot's governance model shares some similarities with Tezos, whereby network upgrades are proposed and voted in by the community. Use cases for, for Polkadot include smart contract chains, impressive, data, cur data curation networks, Oracle chains, ah, Oracle chains, IoT, file storage, and identity. Pretty much everything that you'd want to see in a blockchain is compressed into Polkadot. Looking pretty good. Basically, anything that you can currently do on blockchains, you'll be able to do within Polkadot's blockchain network with the added bonus of being able to move assets between chains seamlessly. So the bull case for Polkadot prospering includes the extent of development work going on behind the scenes. 64 products have received 4.4 million from the Web3 Foundation to build on Polkadot. And there's a Polkadot ecosystem fund operating with the support of Polychain Capital. That's the good news. Here's the bad news. The bear case. It may be launching too late to land a blow on Ethereum. EOS has failed in that respect. Tezos is still warming up. And Algorand and Hedera Hashgraph have created nothing but disgruntled bag holders at this stage. Now remember, this is back in January 2020. Things have changed a little bit for, you know, Hedera Hashgraph and Algorand. So don't shoot the messenger. This is an old article. But I got to tell you, so we take a look at what where everything is in the history, where it is in the past, and what's going to happen now and in the future. I got to tell you, uh, I'm not too optimistic right now. I mean, I could be, but here's my thoughts. 
uh, like I said, it takes more than a great product and a good team to be successful. I mean, there's so many things that go into businesses. There is a, a nice little statistic about uh, small business administration that within, I think it's five years, 70 to 80% of small businesses will close down. It's, now it's between 50 and 70%. It's a high number, we'll say. And I've been a part of those. I've been a part of uh, businesses that have made it, and I've been a part of businesses that do not make it. I can tell you right now, uh, it really comes down to a lot of different factors, and some of those factors are luck in some points. But the, the harder you work and the more type of uh, partnerships that you get and the more people you know that you can say are kingmakers or people that can point you in the right direction and give you the right information uh, and connect, the more successful you'd be. So Polkadot, I have no idea if they're doing those types of things. They have very smart people. But how many other people do we have that are extremely bright and extremely intelligent in these other organizations, these other projects, and they fail or they do nothing or worse, they're obscure. They just fade away to, to obscurity. So I got to tell you, um, I see all the different other YouTubers out there. I mean, they, I'm, of course, because of what I'm into, but I see them, I scroll down and it's just like the next big thing, the next big thing. This is going to 10 X and hundred X and everything else. And they might, they might, I got to tell you, but to me, it's just another shiny object. And, uh, for right now, I'm not going to invest in that. And, um, I mean, you can do whatever you want to, it could pay off massively. It's just, um, I will reserve and wait. I'm a very, um, reserved person anyhow. So we'll see what happens, but that's what I got. All right, so that's it for that section. Let's move on. And next up, we have question of the day. And this comes about, uh, it's a question about one of my one-two punch, uh, Voyager, and uh, what Randy says about it. So let's jump in into the office. All right, buddy, welcome back to the office. So today, uh, for the Q&A of the day, it comes to us from Randy Phillips. And uh, Randy had a pretty good question, and it goes back to my number one pick uh, for a wallet, which is Voyager. So Randy asked the question, he says, hey Dan, maybe you can solve this mystery. On Voyager, I placed a buy order for a chain link at $14.65, $14.65. I got an alert from Coinbase that the price had dropped to $14.64. I thought, great, because the price immediately rocketed back up 10%. My timing was perfect. Uh, so I opened up a Voyager, opened up Voyager only to discover the price only dropped to $14.75 on that exchange so my buy order didn't fire. What the heck's going on? So I asked the, the question, which was, okay, uh, Randy, what was the day this happened? And when did you put the actual uh, buy order or limit order in? And then he immediately got back to me, uh, no, actually a couple hours later, and he says, hey, damn mystery solved. Uh, I placed the order last night, which was August 17th. Today is, what is it? August 18th. Uh, and the price dropped on Coinbase to 1464 at 6.05 p.m. But weirdly, the price at that time on Voyager was 17.60. So that's a huge discrepancy between Coinbase and Voyager, but wait. So uh, when I looked on Voyager this morning, the chart indicated the price dropped to 14.75 at 8.30 a.m. today. But the price on Coinbase was actually 15.81. So he says, I just assumed that prices would be more uh, exact across exchanges given what it was at stake. And you gotta understand, um, for each exchange, and there was a little article that I pulled up from Coinbase, I'll link it, and it states that, uh, uh, what price will I receive when I buy or sell digital currency? And their answer is, uh, it's pretty much say like this, look, uh, the price of digital currencies are determined by supply and demand on our exchange. Uh, there's a difference between the buy, sell, and spot prices displayed on the website. So you have to understand for, for Coinbase, for Kraken, for Gemini, it's all pretty much based on supply and demand and liquidity that they have on that particular exchange. Now, um, Voyager, and real quick, if you look in the uh, description of every one of my videos, there's gonna be a link, and it's, uh, it talks about all different wallets and exchanges that I've ever used and I'm currently using right now. We go everything from uh, Coinbase, the Coinbase Pro, Celsius, Voyager, uh, Uniswap, Uphold, Binance, eToro, don't recommend them, and Crypto.com. And uh, yeah, so for all of those, um, I just tell you, you know, what, what the fees are, what the prices are, what the APR is, if you can get loans or not, everything you really want to know about an alternative to Coinbase, because when you first get in, that's really, you know, your big introduction to cryptocurrency, which is just use Coinbase. 
So uh, you can check it out right there. At the top, there are uh, links, and uh, you don't have to use those links if you want to sign up. You can just go right to uh, Voyager, you can go right to Kraken. But if you use my links, uh, you get between 10 and $25 just for clicking on the link. So it's up to you, whatever you want to do. So in the description of every one of my videos, there's going to be a link to that Google spreadsheet. It'll look like this, and you can open it up and check it out and get all those links and everything else. So but anyhow, uh, so with Voyager, I highly recommend uh, them, and I recommend Celsius. So the thing is, when I talk about these things, I just want to be uh, exact and as open as I possibly can. So when he's saying, you know, hey, there's a huge discrepancy, I immediately take, you know, jump and like, hey, what's going on? So I see the issue here. And you have to understand, like I said, exchanges, uh, they have their own liquidity, they have their own supply and demand. But Voyager is different because they're kind of like the Hotels.com of the uh, cryptocurrency world. You go to Hotels.com, uh, you don't go right to like uh, Marriott, to Doubletree or something like that, because they do all the work for you. They look at all the different prices and they give you, you know, pretty much the best price for what you're looking for and at the location. So Voyager is kind of like the same thing. They look at uh, a wide range of exchanges and go, okay, what's the best price? They get you the, the best price they possibly can, and they make money on the spread. They don't charge you anything. Now, some people say, well, you know, they, you know, some of them are overpriced and some are, you know, whatever it is. But I got to tell you, like, from what I've been using and what I've been seeing, I've only seen it a couple times when, like, an exchange that I could have gone to is a little bit higher. And I'm like, eh, all right. But I got to tell you, I'll just pay for the convenience because I don't have time to look at every everything that's out there, you know? I mean... If they're going to, you know, be like 20% above, then yeah, obviously I'm not going to. But if they're like, you know, two, three, five, five percent or something like that, every so often because of the exchanges that it uses, okay. So what I did was I reached out to Voyager and I asked them this question. I go, okay, now which particular exchanges are you, you know, going for? Are, are you aggregating this price? And I'm just waiting to get back to them because I just I just fired off an email like 30 minutes ago, so I'll get back to everybody. But uh, I thought it was interesting uh, that people would. Uh, well, first of all, this this issue came up, but second of all, that um, you know we're we're not understanding, and it's good that we do understand. I want you to take a look at you know the the different information that's out there about why exchanges have that particular price on their exchange, at, and then at, as opposed to like somebody who's like a brokerage uh, like Voyager. So again, uh, looks like uh, Randy's pretty happy with uh, you know the outcome so far. I'm sure you would like to catch it at uh, 1464, but at 1475, well, okay. But uh, yeah, I've always had my orders filled so far, so looks like a good thing. Now, uh, any other questions about Voyager? Go ahead and send them over, and I'll ship them over to Voyager, and maybe we can get you know somebody on uh, on the line like we did when uh, we had the CEO come on, which was pretty nice. If you haven't checked that video out, I'll link it at the very end. But that's it for today, so uh, let's uh, jump back. All right, and that's it for today. So thanks for sticking with me, really appreciate it. Just wanna give some random shout outs to some members. And we've got, first up, Genosis and Big Papa Ken. That's a great one, Big Papa Ken. Who else we got? Paul G, we got Mr. Black, we got uh, Johnny Bitcoin, Rama Flash, and Sally's W. And that's it. So if you like those videos, there's gonna be two more that's gonna pop up on your left and right. Don't know what they are because uh, YouTube controls that. Just like the ads you may have seen before, uh, don't shoot me. I'm just the uh, channel. YouTube is as responsible. If you don't like those uh, ads or they were scams, let YouTube know. They'd love to hear from you. And that's it for today. Thanks a lot. See you in the next one.